So question for you, what is classical guitar? As we all know, this is classical guitar. But in all seriousness though, this is a question that I've been pondering with for quite a while and maybe you have too. I think that we can all agree that we know what classical guitar isn't. It's not this and it's not this. We can all agree that classical guitar is not playing electric guitar in a band. When does something stop being one thing and start becoming something else? So take a look at this video and while you're watching, let me know what about this is not classical guitar. So if you didn't know who this was, this is a video of Raul Garcia Zarte playing traditional Peruvian folkloric music using a nylon string guitar, a footstool, and using his right hand nails. But if you asked anybody who was familiar with his music if this was classical guitar or not, they would all say that it was not classical guitar, including him. So then it brings up the question, if this isn't classical guitar, does that mean music by Augustine Barrios is not classical guitar? Because it does use folkloric elements, some of them very similar, if not identical, to what's happening here. And if you're saying, of course Barrios' music is classical guitar, then does that make any Latin American influenced music that uses nylon strings and being played with the fingers classical guitar? You know, people such as Antonio Carlos Jobim or Baden Powell, or hey, even some jazz players, people like Gene Barasini or Paul Myers or Lenny Barreau, all of those guys you could then consider our classical guitar. But yet, most people don't. Okay, so by now you're probably either really annoyed or really confused, but keep on watching because I have a few more things to say. So if you're thinking that, well, it has to be music that's written down, it can't be this folkloric music, which is why Barrios is classical guitar, but Raul Garcia Zarate is not, then does that make people like Sam Griffin or Beyond the Guitar classical guitar music? The music is written down, you can buy it and they are it down themselves as the arrangers and, or in some cases, even the composers of this music. Now you might be saying yes to this. However, many people who like their music don't consider it classical guitar, they consider it fingerstyle guitar. But wait, I thought fingerstyle guitar was music that was played on a steel string guitar. People like Tommy Manuel, Annie McKee, and Sung Ha Jung. And if classical guitar is fingerstyle guitar, doesn't that make Annie McKee and Tommy Manuel classical guitarists as well? Or is it really one kind of guitar that separates you from being one kind of guitarist or another? But it seems really weird for that to be the deciding factor. Shouldn't it be the music? Okay, okay, so now you might be thinking, well, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with how you were taught and how you learn the music and what your intention is. Therefore, someone like John Williams is a classical guitarist and Raul Garcia Zarate is not. Problem solved, video over. Hold on a second. Take a listen to this clip and let me know if you think this would be classical guitar or not. <laughs> Now, if you don't know what this is, you might be thinking, well, this is definitely not classical guitar. This is just another Brazilian, Latin American, pop, jazz influenced type of music. But what if I told you that the guitar player playing this was Sergio Saad? And if you're a classical guitarist, I am almost positive that you know who that is. So does that change things? I don't know, you tell me. I could go on and on with more and more examples like this, finding more and more crossovers, but the thing you guys might be wondering now if you're still watching is, isn't music just music? Why do we need to put a label on this? Well, it shouldn't matter, but it also does. 
in a sense, I do think we need labels. I do think we need boundaries. We need things to separate us from one thing to another. When building a classical guitar program or setting up a concert series, we need to know what our audience is going to look to expect. It would be a big letdown for me if I went to see a classical guitar concert and I got somebody up there playing steel string guitar singing some folk song. As much as I might enjoy that other times, that might not be what I'm going for in that moment as the listener. Or when college music programs ask us to pick one modern piece for our audition. How do we best prepare ourselves or prepare our students of what's okay to audition with and what's not? It would be pretty awful to audition for a college with a modern piece of music and have them say that you can't be accepted because you didn't meet their guidelines. How do we know what their guidelines are? And lastly, if you're a performer trying to book your own concerts and build your own name, you have to be able to say what you do so there isn't any confusion. This is something you don't want to have happen at a gig or a concert when it's too late. You want the presenter to know what you are going to be presenting to them so that way they can best present it and advertise it for your potential audience. Now you can show people your music as much as you want to, but at the end of the day, I think we still need words and we still need a reference of what we're going to hear. So like I said in the beginning of the video, what is classical guitar? Go ahead and let me know what that means to you in the comments down below. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for checking out the video. I haven't made a video in a while, but this is something that's been in my mind for quite some time and honestly, maybe part of the reason why I haven't made a video in a bit. But thank you so much for checking out the channel and be expected to see more videos coming from me soon. Until then, keep on playing.